We'll now use the velocity propagation method to find the Jacobian. And for this method, uh, we always start at frame zero, since we already know uh, the ground frame velocities to be zeros. So starting from frame zero, we know the angular velocities of the ground are zero, zero, and zero. And the linear velocities of the ground are zero, zero, and zero as well. Now we move on to frame one, and we know frame one has a revolute joint. So we have to use revolute joint equations to find the angular and linear velocities uh, at that frame. Okay, so for the angular velocities, uh, angular velocity of frame one relative to frame one equals to R10. And again, R10 is the transpose of R01 that was given in transformation matrix T01. Okay, so we want to make sure that we transpose that rotation before we plug it in here. And this is multiplied by omega zero zero, which was given, uh, or we found it earlier in frame zero. Uh, and we just put it here. And then we add to this theta one dot times z one one. So theta one dot and z one one is always zero zero and one. So if we do this uh, multiplication addition, we get zero zero theta dot one for omega one relative to one. Now for the linear velocities of frame one relative to frame one, again, we uh, do the transpose of R01 that we have in the transformation matrix. So we transpose it and put it here. Then between two brackets, we are gonna have V00, which we found already from frame zero. And we put it right here. And then we add to this omega 00, zero cross product with P1 uh, relative to zero. Omega zero zero, we already have it from the previous frame. We put it right here. And then P zero one is the position of frame one relative to frame zero that we have in the transformation matrix T zero one. So that would be the fourth column from that matrix. We bring it, and in this case, it was zero, zero, zero. Okay? So if we do this multiplication, we end up with a zero, zero, zero for the linear velocities of frame one relative to frame one. Uh, now we go to frame two, which uh, has a revolute joint again. So we have to use revolute joint equations to find the angular and linear velocities uh, at that frame. So for the angular velocities of frame two relative to frame two, we use R21, which is the, the transpose of R12 that we have in the transformation matrix. And we put it right here. And this is multiplied by omega 1, which we found already from the previous step. Okay. It was zero, zero, theta one dot. We put it right here. And then we add to this theta two dot times z two two. So theta two dot is our variable for joint two, and z two two is always zero, zero, one. Okay, if we do this multiplication and addition, we find out that uh, theta or omega angular velocities of frame two relative to frame two are uh, negative s two theta one dot, negative c two theta one dot, and then theta two dot. Now we move on to linear velocities of frame two relative to frame two. Again, we use uh, R21, which is the transpose of R12. We put it right here. And then between two brackets, we have V11. And we already found this from the previous step. Uh, and this was uh, 0, 0, 0. And then plus omega 11, again, we found in the previous step, it was 0, 0, theta 1 dot. And we find the cross product of this with P2 relative to 1. And again, P2 relative to 1 is the fourth column of transformation matrix T12. Okay? And that was uh, 0L0. All right? So if we do this, um, these are zeros. This cross product turns out to be negative L theta 1 dot, 0, 0. And then if you multiply these two, we come up with V22, which is negative LC2 theta 1 dot, L, S2, theta 1 dot, and 0. Now we move on to frame 3. Remember, frame, frame 3, we have a prismatic joint. Our third joint is prismatic. So the equations we use for linear and angular velocities have to be uh, these equations for prismatic joints. So we start here with the angular velocity of frame 3 relative to frame 3. And we use here R3, 2. Again, this would be the transpose of R2, 3 that we have in our transformation matrix. And we put it right here. 
And this, this is multiplied by omega 2, 2, which we already found here from the previous step. You plug it right in here. If we multiply the two, then we find omega 3 relative to frame 3. And then for the linear velocity of frame 3 relative to frame 3, we use R3, 2, which is the transpose of R2, 3. And between two bracket, brackets, we have V2 relative to 2, and that we have here in the previous step. We put it right there. And then plus omega 2, 2. Again, we found it in the previous step right here. So we plug it into uh, this equation. And we find the cross product of this with P3 relative to 2. And P3 relative to 2 is for the third or the fourth column of the transformation matrix T23. And this turned out to be 0, D3, and 0. Okay? So uh, the difference here is that, remember, this is prismatic, so we have an extra term that did not appear in the Revolute joint uh, uh, equation. So that extra term here is D3 dot times Z3, 3. And we put it, this is d3 dot, the variable for the third joint, and z33 is always 0, 0, and 1. Okay? So if we do this multiplication addition, then we come up with the linear velocity of frame 3 relative to frame 3. We're now ready to find the linear and angular uh, Jacobians using the linear and angular velocities uh, of frame 3. So I'm going to start here with the linear velocities uh, of frame 3. To find the linear Jacobian and uh, I do this by rearranging the velocity of frame 3 relative to frame 3 so we got this in the previous step here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rearrange this uh, vector into a matrix and a vector okay so the vector on this side includes the joint velocities that would be theta 1 dot theta 2 dot and d3 dot and uh, this matrix here, we're going to have to extract uh, from these equations uh, that I have for x dot, y dot, and z dot. So let's start with the first equation here. What's multiplied by theta 1 dot? It's negative LC2, and that's negative LC2 multiplied by theta 1 dot. And then what's multiplied by theta 2 dot? It's negative D3, and that's what I have here, negative D3. And what's multiplied by D3 dot? Nothing. And again, here I want to emphasize here the importance of not getting confused between D3 and D.3. So D3 here is just the distance uh, in joint 3, and D.3 is the linear velocity of joint 3. So I don't have D3 dot here. I only have D3, which was um, multiplied by theta 2 dot. So that's why I have it here, and I have 0 uh, multiplied by D3 dot. Uh, going to the second equation now, uh, what's multiplied by theta 1 dot? It's S2 D3, so I put it here, multiplied by theta 2 dot, and then nothing multiplied by theta 2 dot or D3 dot. So I have 0 and 0 for these two elements. <clears throat> Third equation, what's multiplied by theta 1 dot? It's L S2, so I put this here, L S2, multiplied, multiplied by theta 1 dot, and what's multiplied by theta 2 dot? It's 0, so I have 0 here. And what's multiplied by d3 dot? It's positive 1, so I put 1 here, that's multiplied by d3 dot. So from here I can find uh, the Jacobian, the linear Jacobian, in reference to frame 3, which is this 3 by 3 matrix. Now I move on to the angular velocities uh, to find the angular Jacobian. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, the angular velocity of frame 3 relative to frame 3. Uh, these are the uh, velocities that we found from the previous uh, slide. And again, I'm going to rearrange this, these three equations uh, to look like this, where we have a matrix multiplied by a vector, and the vector includes the joint velocities theta1 dot, theta2 dot, and d3 dot. Okay? Now, to fill out this 3x3 uh, three three matrix, I go back to these equations, each one individually. So as I can see here, I have theta1 dot multiplied by negative s2, and that's why I put negative s2 here. And I have nothing multiplied by theta2 dot or d3 dot, so I have 0 and 0 for these two elements. The second equation, I have negative 1 multiplied by theta2 dot, so I put negative 1 here, that's multiplied by theta2 dot, and I have nothing multiplied by theta1 dot or d3 dot, so I have 0 here and 0 here in these two elements. 
Third equation, I have negative C2 multiplied by theta 1 dot. So I put that in here. And I have nothing multiplied by theta 2 dot or D3 dot. So I have 0 and 0 here. Now that gives me that 3 by 3 matrix, which is the angular Jacobian uh, in reference to frame 3. Now if I, if I want to find the general Jacobian uh, relative to frame 3, all I have to do is just combine uh, the Jacobian, the linear and, and angular Jacobians in frame 3. So I have here V3 relative to 3 and omega 3 relative to 3. I took these from here. And that vector becomes a 6 by 1 vector that includes x dot, y dot, z dot from this vector and omega x, omega y, omega z from this vector. And now here for the Jacobian, the first 3 by 3 elements are from the linear Jacobian here. And the lower 3 by 3 elements are from the angular Jacobian, which is right here. Okay, and then the vector of joint velocities is uh, the same vector that I have in both linear and angular cases. So that would be theta 1 dot, theta 2 dot, and d3 dot. Okay, so from here I can uh, uh, include here the J3, which is a 6 by 3 uh, matrix. That would be my Jacobian in reference to frame 3. So that would be a J3 Jacobian. Now we move on to the next requirement for this problem, which is uh, finding the Jacobian using direct differentiation method. And again, for the linear Jacobian, we need to use uh, the position vector of uh, frame 3 relative to 0. And for that, we can find that vector in the transformation matrix T03. Uh, okay, so if we go back to our transformation matrices, we are going to find that the fourth column in T03 represents, of course, P3 relative to 0. Uh, and that gives me X, Y, and Z for uh, that particular frame 3 relative to frame 0. And uh, in that transformation matrix, I find out that these are the three equations uh, in the transformation matrix for fourth column. So I'm going to use these uh, and, and do partial differentiation of these to find uh, the linear Jacobian. Okay. So I'm going to differentiate each one of these equations with respect to each one of uh, the joint variables, as we see here. So the linear Jacobian in reference to frame 0. Now remember, when we do direct differentiation, uh, the reference here that we get the Jacobian out of is in reference to frame 0. So I'm going to do first uh, differentiation of x with respect to theta 1. This is my x. So I, if I want to differentiate this with respect to theta 1, I have theta 1 here in S1 and I have theta 1 here in C1. So differentiation of sine theta 1 is cosine theta 1. So that would be negative L cosine theta 1 that we see right here. And then differentiation of cosine theta 1 is negative sine theta 1. Everything is, is uh, constant. So negative negative becomes positive and that would give me positive D3 S1 S2. Okay, so that would be the differentiation of X with respect to theta 2. Moving on, differentiation of x with respect to theta 2. I'm sorry, this is differentiation of x with respect to theta 1. Now, differentiation of x with respect to theta 2, I go back to the same x equation. I don't have theta 2 here, so differentiation with respect to theta 2 is 0. And I have s2 here. Differentiation of s2 would be uh, uh, cosine theta 2. And that, that's what I have here, negative d3 is cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. These two would be considered uh, constants uh, when we do partial differentiation with respect to theta 2. Okay. Now, uh, the third element here, differentiation of x with respect to d3. If I look here, I have d3 in this term. Okay. No d3 here, so that differentiation will be 0 here. And uh, c1 and s2 will become constant for that differentiation. So basically, all I have here is negative c1, s2 for that third element. Now for the second row, I move on to differentiation of equation y with respect to theta 1. Again, I have theta 1 here, I have theta 1 here. Cosine becomes negative sine, so I have negative L sine theta 1. And then uh, sine theta 1 becomes cosine theta 1, so I have negative D3 cosine theta 1 sine theta 1, which is right here. Okay. For the second element, I would differentiate y with respect to theta 2. So I don't have theta 2 here, so that differentiation becomes 0. I have theta 2 here 
and S2. Uh, so differentiation of sine theta 2 would be cosine theta 2. So this becomes negative D3 S1 C2. Negative D3 S1 C2 right here. All right, the third element, differentiation of y with respect to D3. If I look here, I have D3 only in this term. So this differentiation for the first term is 0. And S1 and S2 are considered constants. So the differentiation for this with respect to theta 3, uh, I'm sorry, to D3, will be negative S1 S2. So that would be negative S1 S2 right here. Now for the third uh, row, I'm going to differentiate z with respect to theta 1. This is the equation for z. I don't have theta 1. That means differentiation will be 0. That's why I have here. And then differentiation of z with respect to theta 2. I come here, I have cosine theta 2. Differentiation for this would be negative sine theta 2. So I'd have here positive d3 sine theta 2. That's what I have here, d3 sine theta 2. And then for the third element, differentiation of z with respect to d3. So I come here, this is z, differentiation of this with respect to d3 would be negative c2, which is what I have right here. Okay, so that basically gives me the 3 by 3 Jacobian, linear Jacobian, in reference to frame 0. Now for the angular Jacobian, uh, we cannot use direct differentiation method uh, since we have a rotation matrix. We cannot do direct differentiation for the rotation matrix. So instead, we're going to use a little uh, a different method that would give us the Jacobian uh, directly in frame 0. So that method here gives me the, Jacob the angular Jacobian in reference to frame 0. And that would be including a 3x3 three three matrix that each uh, column uh, has these three elements. K1, R0, 1, Z1, 1. K2, R0, 2, Z2, 2 k3, r0, 3, and z3, 3. Of course, if we have more elements or more joints, we can add more to this. Since we only have three joints, then we only have these three uh, columns. Okay, so k1 and k2 and k3 are dependent on what type of uh, joints we have. So as we said earlier, for revolute joints, k would be 1. For prismatic joints, k would be 0. So in this case, since my first two joints are revolute joints, I have k1 and k2 equals to 1. And my third joint is a prismatic joint, so k3 would be 0. And I want you to pay attention again to here. So this is r0, 1. This is not r12, it's r0, 2. So this is basically r0, 1 times r12. And this one here is r0, 3, which means it's r0, 1 times r12 times r23. So make sure that you use these appropriately as shown here. Now if we go ahead and plug the values of these uh, into, into the equation, uh, k1 would be 1, and then r0, 1, we got this from the transformation matrix, matrix t0, 1. We put it right here. And then z1, 1 is always 0, 0, 1. So that would give me a 3 by 1 column. Okay. For the second column, k2, revolute joint means uh, k2 is 1. And then R02, we already found this from uh, T02 uh, earlier. So we plug it right in here. And then Z22 is always 0, 0, and 1. Now for K3, since it's a prismatic joint, then the value is 0. So that's why we put 0 here. And this is multiplied by the, the R03. Again, we've already found this from T03. We plug it right in here. And again, Z33 is always 0, 0, and 1. Okay, so this would give me my first column, this would give me my second column, and this would give me my third column. If we do these multiplications, we're going to end up with this 3 by 3 matrix, and that would be representative of the angular Jacobian in reference to frame 0. Okay, so now that we have both the linear uh, Jacobian from the previous slide and the angular Jacobian from this slide, we can combine them together. Uh, to get the general Jacobian in reference to frame 0. Okay, so what we do is we put the linear Jacobian up top here and the angular Jacobian Jacobian in the bottom. Uh, so the first three by three elements here are taken from the previous slide where we had the linear Jacobian. And then the bottom three by three elements are taken from uh, the Jacobian 
uh, here on this slide, which is the angular Jacobian. Okay, so that gives me a six by three Jacobian that's in reference to frame zero. We now move on to the next requirement for uh, this example. So we're going to be using uh, force and moment propagation to find uh, the Jacobian. Uh, as we said earlier, for the force and moment propagation, we always start with uh, the last frame. In this case, it's the frame three. And since the, you know these are from the Cartesian uh, space, then we already know that forces and moments in frame three are the standard fx, fy, fz for the forces. So that would define my F3 relative to 3. And for the moments, it's NX, NY, and Z. And that defines my N3 in reference to frame 3. Okay, so these are either given or I can just assume them since they are in the Cartesian space of the end effector. Now we'll move on to frame 2. I can put the equations for the, the forces in, acting on frame 2, which are R2, 3 multiplied by F33 from the previous step here. So R23, we already have this from the transformation matrix T23. So we plug it in right here. And then F33 is already given in the previous step, which is right here. We do this multiplication and then we come up with F2 relative to two. Now for the moment on, on frame two, in reference to frame two, uh, the equation for this uh, is R23 multiplied by N33, which we have right here. And then we add to this P3 relative to two, cross product this with F2 relative to two, which is uh, defined right here in the same step. Okay, so R23, we have it from the transformation matrix T23. And then N33, we have it right here, N33. So we just take it and plug it in here. And then P3 relative to two, this would be the fourth column from T to three, uh, that defines the position of frame three relative to frame zero, uh, to, relative to frame two. So I put this uh, P to three right here and cross product this with F to two, which is right here in the same step, the previous uh, equation. And that would be uh, right here. Okay, so I have all of these. When I multiply these, if I multiply these two, I get this vector, nx, nz, negative ny. And if I do the cross product on these, I get this vector. And then I add them together to find n2 relative to frame 2. Uh, now we move on to frame 1. Uh, again, we need to use the equations for frame 1. So forces of uh, frame 1, acting on frame 1 relative to frame 1, uh, equals to r12. And we take this from transformation matrix T12. And we multiply this by F22, which we already found from the previous step uh, from frame two, which is Fx, Fz, and negative Fy. So we put them together, we multiply them, and we get the vector for the acting forces on frame one relative to frame one. For the moments acting on frame one reference, in reference to frame one, uh, again, we use the equation for this R12. And we find this from T12. <clears throat> and then we multiply this by N22, which we already found from the previous step for frame 2. So we plug it in here. And then we add to this P12. And that's the position of frame 2 in reference to frame 1, which is the fourth column in T12. So we take that and we plug it in here. And then we do the cross product of this with F11 which is right here in the previous equation that we already found for frame one. Okay, so I put them in here and then we evaluate this, the multiplication of the first uh, matrix and, and vector uh, comes here. And then the results from the cross product of this vector times this vector come here. And then if we add these two together, then we get the vector that defines the moments on frame one in reference to frame one. Okay, now do we move on to frame zero? And the answer is no, that's not needed because frame zero does not have any joint. So we do not need to find the torques or the forces acting on that joint, which does not exist for frame zero. So we stop right here. 
and then we try to find the torques uh, or forces acting on each one of the joints that we have. Uh, to find the forces or moments uh, or torques that are needed for each one of the joints to sustain uh, or keep the arm in uh, static equilibrium, when we have these uh, Cartesian forces acting at the end effector, we need to find these torques from the forces and torques that we found at each frame. So let's start with Rivoli with joint one. And again, here it makes a difference whether we're looking at Rivoli joint or prismatic joint. For joint one, it's a Rivoli joint. So we're gonna find the torque for it. And for that reason, we are gonna use N11. So N1 in reference to frame one, because we have joint one. And we do the transpose of this multiplied by Z11. Okay, so all what this is doing here is letting me take the very last element of this vector right here. Okay, so N11 is already, we already found this in previous steps. We transpose it and put it here and we multiply it by Z11, which is always 0, 0, 001. And that gives me the very last element of this column, which is basically the acting force or the active torque in this case uh, that would be needed for joint one motor to sustain or hold the arm at static equilibrium, okay? Now, if we move on to joint two, again, joint two is a revolute joint. So we need to find the torque needed for that motor to hold the arm at static equilibrium. And for that reason, we're gonna need to use N22, this one right here. And we already found N22 from previous steps. So that N22 from previous steps is transposed and put here and multiplied by Z22, which is 0, 0, 001 always. And what this is doing basically is taking the very last element of this vector, which is the acting element on, on frame two uh, about the Z direction, which is the torque basically that's needed for that particular joint uh, to hold the arm at static equilibrium, okay? So you put this here and that would give me the second element of tau. Now for the third joint, I have a prismatic joint. So in this case, I'll be finding the force instead of the torque, okay? And because I'm finding the force, I'm gonna be using F33 instead of N33, okay? So F33, because I'm finding the force, and this is a prismatic joint. So I use F33 that I have found earlier uh, in previous steps. I, took the, I take the transpose of this, which is right here, okay? And then I multiply this by Z33, which is right here. Okay, so what I'm doing basically again is just taking the third element of this vector and put it right here, which is the force needed uh, on frame three for the, for the motor on frame three to hold the arm at static equilibrium. And of course, as we know that the acting force or moment in any joint is always acting along or about frame Z uh, or, or Z axis of that frame. Okay, so this is my force needed for that prismatic joint to keep the arm at static equilibrium. Now, since I have all three of these two torques and one forces, I can find my tau vector. So I just line them up here, tau one, tau two, tau three. And I take tau one from what I found here and tau two from what I found here and tau three from what I found here. Okay, again, this represents torque because it's a revolute joint. The second element represents a torque because it's a revolute joint. The third element represents a force because it's a prismatic joint. I'm now ready to find the Jacobian. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the linear Jacobian. Uh, for the linear Jacobian, I'm gonna take the tau vector that we found in the previous slide, this vector right here. And then I'm gonna rearrange this and just take part of, of this, uh, uh, this vector, not all of it, just part of it. That's why I didn't put here equal sign. I put these three lines. That means this does not equal to this. This is part of this, okay? And I'll see why uh, we are doing this. So I take this tau equation and I need to rearrange this and just pick some of these uh, uh, elements or some of these uh, terms, uh, not all of them, that are relevant to my linear Jacobian, okay? So to rearrange this, again here, I'm gonna have to uh, rearrange this in a matrix multiplied by a vector. And because we are talking about the linear Jacobian, this vector should have only the Cartesian linear forces 
uh, that would be fx, fy, and fz. I'm not going to include nx or ny or nz. Uh, I will include these in the linear Jacob in the angular Jacobian. Okay. For the linear Jacobian, I will only extract data that are relevant to fx, fy, fz, which are the linear forces acting on my end effector. Okay. So I put this vector here, and I need now to fill out this matrix using these equations. So I go to the first equation. What's multiplied by fx here? I have negative LC2, so I put negative LC2, no more Fx anywhere here, okay? So now I move on to Fy, what's multiplied by Fy? It's S2D3 right here, so I put S2D3, okay? Nothing else here multiplied by Fy, and then what's multiplied by Fz? It's LS2 right here, so I put LS2 right here, okay? Nothing else multiplied by Fz. Now, these two terms are never used because I don't have nx or ny or nz in here. So basically, these two are ignored, and that's why I don't have the equal sign between these two. Okay, now I move on to the next equation for the next row. Okay, what's multiplied by fx? I have negative d3 multiplied by fx, so I put it here, negative d3. Uh, anything multiplied by fy? No, nothing. And then nothing also multiplied by fz, so I put 0 and 0 here. Again, I ignored the ny because I don't have any n, x, or ny, or nz here. So basically, this will not be relevant for my linear Jacobian. For the third row, I go through the third equation. Nothing is multiplied by fx or fy, so that's why you have 0, 0. And we have 1 multiplied by fz, so I put the 1 here that's multiplied by fz. Okay? So that gives me here uh, a matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix, that represents the linear Jacobian transpose in reference to frame 3. Okay, so if I transpose this 3 by 3 uh, Jacobian, then I get my linear Jacobian in reference to frame 3. And that's what I did. All what I did here is transpose this matrix, and the transpose comes out here, and that will be the linear Jacobian in reference to frame 3, and it's a 3 by 3 matrix. Now we move on to the uh, angular Jacobian. So now we're going to find the angular Jacobian using the same equation that we used here. Okay, that's the tau equations that we found earlier. So again, I didn't put equal sign here because these are not equal. I'm going to just extract some of the data here, not all of it, to find the angular Jacobian. Okay, so to rearrange these, I'm going to look here uh, to find a matrix times a vector. In the vector, I'm going to put nx, ny, and z, which are the acting moments at the end of vector, uh, which would be relevant to my angular Jacobian. Okay? And then for this matrix, I'm going to start filling it out from what I have here in this vector. So I look at the first line. What's multiplied by nx? I can see this term here has negative s2 multiplied by nx. So I put negative S2 right here, okay? What's multiplied by NY? Nothing, so that would be a zero. And then what's multiplied by NZ? I have this term right here, so it's negative C2, and I put negative C2 here, that's multiplied by NZ, okay? Again, I'm ignoring everything here that's multiplied by anything other than NX or NY and Z. That's why I do not have the equal sign here. Now moving on to the next row, I go to the next tau equation. Uh, what's multiplied by nx? Nothing, so that would be 0. What's multiplied by ny? It's negative 1 right here. So I put negative 1 in the second element of this row. And then what's multiplied by nz? Again, nothing, so that would be a 0 right here. Okay? And I ignored this because it does not have any multiplication by any nx or ny or nz. Moving on to the third row. What's multiplied by nx? Nothing. What's multiplied by ny? Nothing. What's multiplied by nz? Again, nothing. So I have 0, 0, and 0 right here. Okay? So that matrix here gives me the transpose of the angular Jacobian in reference to frame 3. So if I transpose this, then I'll get the angular Jacobian in reference to frame 3, which is a 3 by 3 matrix as shown in here. 
Now, if I want to find the general Jacobian relative to frame 3, all I have to do is combine these two Jacobians together. Okay, so if I look at this, I have J in reference to frame 3. I have linear Jacobian up here and angular Jacobian down here. So the first 3 by 3 elements are from the linear Jacobian, and then the second 3 by 3 elements are from the angular Jacobian. Okay, and then if we compare this to what we got in part E, it's the same 6 by 3 matrix that represents my Jacobian in reference to frame 3. So answer for, uh, for part E is the same as the answer for part G, which is of course expected.